All right, folks, let's get on to the main event um, for our AJA Lunchtime Live today. We are talking about finding the right visuals for your animal advocacy. And we have Joanne MacArthur and Victoria DeMartini. And um, let me tell you a little bit about these uh, magnificent beings as Kirsten starts to spotlight all of us. So Joanne, first of all, is an award-winning photojournalist, and she's a sought-after speaker. And of course, she's the founder of We Animals Media. Uh, Joe's been been documenting the plight of animals on all seven continents for almost two decades. Oh my God. Um, she's the author of three books, We Animals, Captive, and Hidden Animals in the Anthropocene, and was the subject of Canadian filmmaker Liz Marshall's acclaimed documentary, The Ghosts in Our Machine, which was such a good film. If you haven't seen it, you need to see it. Joanne is based in Toronto, and she travels many months of each year to document and share the stories of animals worldwide. Welcome, Joe. <laughs> What a warm welcome. Thanks, Kimberly. Aww. And I'm just going to take a second to also introduce your cohort here. Um, Victoria DeMartini is, um, let me just, where did I just lose her? Is a photographer and a business consultant and activism, and I love this, a part-time cat wrangler. Um, she uh, wrangles a plethora of rescue cats who share her Montreal home with her and her husband. She manages the We Animals stock platform with the goal of making it the most complete collection of visuals available to users around the world um, in order to help them help animals. And she also works with WAM's contributors in the field uh, to coordinate their assignments and investigations. So Victoria, welcome. Thank you so much. I love that I'm here. I, I participated in the Animal Justice Academy and I, it's just so nice to be a guest. I'm so excited. Oh, well, and you, you've been very lovely and active in AJA too. So we're so happy to have you on. Wonderful. Um, okay, so let's. So the, today is going to be a little bit of picking your brains. It's also going to be a little bit more of um, a workshop on how to use uh, the stock um, site for We Animals. But I just want to start with you, Joe, because you know you, of course, are the the originator of all of this. Um, a, a lot of there aren't many folks in animal advocacy who don't know who you are, Joe. You're a legend. Um, and in case. Um, they also don't know about We Animals. Can you talk a little bit about where We Animals started, um, what the inspiration was, and, and sort of the evolution of We Animals? Yes, thanks, Kimberly. Um, you know, the camera is a tool for change, and that's what I love about it. It's this incredibly powerful tool in the world. And, um, and so it was almost 20 years ago that I decided that I would use that tool to help animals. Uh, the camera, is illuminating the human plight and has been uh, has been you know since it helped abolish slavery in 1865 um, photographic contributions were even happening back then but really human centered and um, and there are just so many hidden animals in the world we see a lot of wildlife you know we're very comfortable seeing wildlife we're very comfortable seeing companion animals but what about all of these hidden animals those we eat those we wear uh, those who are used in, used in medical research and in entertainment and so on. And so the more I started getting educated about these animals, thank you, PETA pamphlets. This is like two decades ago when you right. were like, throw away for pamphlets. There was no um, online, Joe. There was no <laughs> online. Like we had to just dig so hard to find stuff. Exactly. Yeah. I did and uh, got educated and realized that there were not a lot of good visuals in the animal rights advocacy space. So the visuals that were being used were, hell, uh, you know, not very good cameras, not professional images, uh, images that were blurry or under, over underexposed, uh, sort of these shot in the dark one off images that uh, were meant to show industries and what's happening, what needs to change. But like, we all know that strong visuals go really, really long way. And, we just weren't seeing many of those in this space. And so I committed myself to uh, creating strong visuals for NGOs. And so I started ravenously traveling around the world, working with and for NGOs and providing uh, free materials for them. Because also one of the reasons they can't get good, good stuff is because NGOs often don't have a lot of money and they'll just use what's, what's free out there. And so long ago I committed to uh, creating free materials. And at the time I was using my wedding photography and 
like my commercial work to fund the documentary work, but I really, really needed to scale up. And so in the last few years, we changed my project, which was a solo project, We Animals, to We Animals Media. We are now a photo agency. We are a staff of, of 12, I think, Vic, 10 or 12. And, uh, and we just really wanted to scale up and have a lot of contributors um, creating really good visuals, video and photo around the world. And uh, so now I think we have 57 contributors. It's incredible, like so proud. 57 contributors, uh, material on the stock site from 62 uh, countries. And I'm going to stop there because I'm like sort of, I think I'm answering a bunch of things that you want to ask me. About. No, it's okay. Well, you know what, Victoria, why don't you jump in to talk, uh, you know, just give us a little thumbnail of, of the stock site, you know, before we go into the, the, the nuts and bolts of it. Great. Well, as Joe said, we wanted to create a platform that would be accessible to people all over the world, to NGOs, to individuals, to people that are really looking for these types of resources for their advocacy. It was really important to Joe and to the team that these resources be free. So we created this platform. There's currently, it says on the homepage, 13,000 royalty-free images, but we create so much new content on an ongoing basis. We're actually over 14,000 at this point. Uh, we have, as Joe mentioned, the visuals are from 62 countries around the world. We have 495 organizations who are registered on the site and who currently use our visuals to advocate for animals. Just last year in 2021, since we um, launched the site, we had 17,000 downloads. So that's, you know, that's a lot of people doing a lot of great work for animals. And, you know, those of you who know Joe for a while now probably are familiar with the archive, which we have now archived. And this stock site is the newer, better, more accessible version. So I can't wait to show it to you later. My gosh. Yeah. Jay just wrote, I, I didn't realize this was an option to use Joe's visuals and advocacy. And that's why we're here. Um, so, um, you know, Joe, I remember way back in the early 10s, is that what we call them? Like 2010, <laughs> 2011, when I had to come, you know, the very first campaign I ever did, why love one but eat the other, right? And I had to come to Joe and I'm like, Joe, can I use this photo? Can I use this? You know, I'm like, I'm interrupting her as she's going to bed. Can I use this? You know, <laughs> and now it's just like there, it's all there. Well, at the time, uh, I had things on hard drives. And so I would get an email request. And then I would have to, you know, go looking for the images. Or if I was traveling, I'd say, I'd get back to you in a week, and I'll get you what you need. But now you just, you know, search your what you need by keyword. And you click the size, you click the license and download, but we will get into that. And it's yeah. just a fantastic system that Vic has worked so hard to build. And uh, we're just so thrilled that so many people are using it without us even advertising all that much. Like it's word of mouth. And uh, anyway, we're just getting going. It's good. Oh God. And, and so Joe, I mean, can you talk about how important having a tool like this is, you know, how before this sort of what people were running into, I mean, you, you alluded to it, but well, first of all, most of the photos that we could as Canadians that we could access were American for a long time. Um, and then, you know, also just a lot of photos out there, there's just a lot of rigmarole around um, either buying them or, you know, figuring out royalties or, you know, just mm -hmm. writing for permission. So tell, tell us a little bit about, you know, how that was for people to work with and what you wanted to create for them? Well, we needed to look at scope and I, and I always have. I'm glad it's not just me traveling six to eight months a year now trying to get as much as I can. Uh, we know that people need images from their countries or their continents. So that is a goal. That's also why we have so many contributors now. And uh, up-to-date images as well. It's very easy for people to say, well, that was 10 years ago, or you know, that was one bad day or one bad farm. And so we really want to have quite a breadth of work. Uh, Victoria and I were just talking about that yesterday as we were planning for this. Like we look forward to uh, screen sharing, uh, big screen to show you a little bit about you know, how we've put things into galleries and sub galleries and keywords. Um, it's all very organized now. Yeah, it's like, I, I kind of wondered if you just did this to get people like me off your back. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, um, okay, let's let's talk about. Um, I mean, you talked about you originally, Joe, were wanting to create photos um, and images for uh, video images as well for NGOs. But this stock site isn't just for organizations anymore, right? Yeah, good call. It's absolutely not. The bulk of our users are NGOs, but it's really important that we have people organizing protests to use this work. Uh, we see our images on placards all over the world, which is great. Uh, we have really young students. We have academics of all stripes using the work. Um, we have media using the work. And so to uh, you know, build an interesting model because we want everything free for people helping animals but uh, for-profit should not just be able to use them for free. And also we are sustained by donations and by uh, purchases of images. And so Vic and the team have crafted different licenses. So if you're helping animals, you can you know, check that off. You can explain in better detail, Vic. And, um, but if you're for-profit, then you have to buy the images and there's a whole model around that. Did that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. It just gives a picture of, you know, like a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, I'm just an, an a lone activist, but you're like, use, use the images. Let's, let's get the best images out there. And, and speaking of which, you know, tell, let's talk a little bit about this. And, and I know uh, Vic might uh, uh, sort of pop in with uh, her screen share, but what are the important things we need to know about using visuals in our animal advocacy? Joe, I know this is a big thing, but you know, like how do we make it as effective as possible? And, or, but also logistically, um, what do we need to know? That is a big thing. And I think it's just about time to turn over to our screen sharing. Okay. So that yeah, let's do it. And we can uh, dive into examples of how to use images, what makes a strong campaign image, what like, ideas of how not to use the images as well. But Vic, uh, here we are. Feel free to step in. We're on the landing page. Yeah, so this is what you will see if you log in to stock.weanimalsmedia.org. This is our landing page. And you'll see right there, we've made it very, very easy to search. There's just this great big search button and you can enter in anything you want. However, I'm gonna suggest that before you do anything, the first thing you do is create an account. So up here, you've got the main icons of the site and you can just go in. And if you've already got an account, you can just log in. If you don't, you can register. And it takes literally like a minute, not even, to register for an account. Once you're registered for an account, you'll have more functionality on the site. You'll be able to share. You'll be able to create collections. There's just a lot more you can do when you're registered. And of course, you do need to register in order to download and license the images. So I'm already registered. Let me log in. So that yeah, I can about that, Vic, I was going to ask, if you don't register, what do you get access to or not access? Yeah, you don't have to register in order to look through the images and the videos. Uh, we keep saying images, but we do have video on the site as well. So we're adding more and more video content because we realize that that's also very powerful and people are asking for that. So we have images and video. Um, and if you're not registered, you can continue to search. You can look at things. You can click into any of our galleries. Um, and you can find details. So if you're gonna look at an image, you can look at the image full screen, you can see the headline, you can find out where it was shot, who the photographer is, what year it was photographed, all of that information is available to you. And you can see that with or without being logged in. I have a question, Vic. Sure. People are asking the difference uh, between weanimalsmedia.org and stock.weanimalsmedia.org. There's some discussion in the chat about that. Oh, is there? Okay, well, the stock site is really the platform where you can search and download images. And then weanimalsmedia.org is our main website. So on the main website, you still can access the stock search, but you also see all of the news, everything that's happening with We Animals. You can learn about our projects. You can sign up for our masterclass. You can support our work. So there, it's just a much more comprehensive site that really encompasses everything that We Animals Media does. And then, you know, of course, the stock site is where you go to get your images and your videos. So do you want to talk about some of the visuals that you selected, Joe? 
Yes. Oh, someone's excited about the masterclass. <laughs> yeah, we can, we can put, we're going to put that uh, link in at the end because we'll talk a little bit about it then. So yes, there's a masterclass. <laughs> Great. So one of the things you can do when you're logged in is you can create collections of visuals that you can refer to anytime you're logged in. So for today, Joe's created a collection that we've called AJA Lunch and Learn. I'll talk a little bit more about collections later, but let's get into some of these visuals that Joe's selected. Let me just bring that up. There we go. Oh, quite a variety here, Joe. Where do you want to start? <laughs> I think I want to start with eye contact. Okay. That in a lot of these images, and by the way, you can also search the platform uh, by typing in eye contact. So I think that one of the strongest ways that you can convey um, the animal, um, their connection to us. Um, you know, it's like that with humans as well. We can connect more quickly. We feel more compassionately if there's eye contact between us. And so that is one of the, the tenets of my work and something that I'm always looking for is, um, and in this one, the, the hen is not looking directly at me, but her gaze is very apparent. Uh, perhaps we can go to uh, Vic, one of the other images of, um, like Ron, the chimpanzee on the left. Oh yeah, what an iconic picture. And uh, so Ron is looking at me and that means he's looking out at all of you. And this is you know, one of the strongest things we can get in the images. Um, can we skip out of this one? I'm gonna click on one more. Eye contact is also uh, the, at the top you have the black and white pig, uh, black and white pigs, there we go. So of course, what we often want is for people to engage in these painful uh, images, these painful stories, we want to engage, people to engage with the suffering of others. And for the most part, it's human instinct to turn away from suffering because we're afraid of it. We have a bad relationship with it. We think we can't handle it. And uh, especially when it's other species, we have a long list of reasons why we should just turn away and ignore it. And, so at We Animals Media and in animal photojournalism, we want to create images that are poignant and stunning. And yes, you might want to turn away from them, but we want people to return their gaze and to reconnect. So the images have to be uh, very evocative and well composed. And again, eye contact. So uh, if we click out of this image, and uh, it's almost like um, that pig Joe is 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 drawing is compelling us to come into her world. Let's click on the rabbit, uh, the vertical rabbit there. And so this is this is one of the we animals media most popular images because it speaks for itself, doesn't it? It's a wide angle lens. It shows not just the animal but the constructs in which we keep the animal, the suffering that the animal endures and, and will endure. And uh, she's looking out at us. And um, it's like, you know, quite often what we see in animals' eyes is, is fear towards us and questioning, like, what are you going to do to me? What's next? And what an incredible legacy for us to have, isn't it? Uh, I hope it changes soon. Um, now, so eye contact. Uh, context is very important. Uh, it's very easy to photograph an animal, like a nice portrait of an animal, but it doesn't say much for it. It's almost exploitative. It can be sometimes because it's like, just look at this, look at this animal. But what I really want us to look at, and probably what you want us to look at as well, is our relationship with animals, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And as you can see here, we have a lot of that here. Um, let's see. If you click two up, uh, Vic, the people taking a selfie at the zoo. Yeah. Uh, so you'll see a lot of people in our uh, images because we want us to reflect on our relationship uh, with animals and how we see them and how we fail to see them. Hidden animals are even in plain view, like at a zoo and a circus and a rodeo, because we make it all about us, don't we? <laughs> and um, so, you know, this image, it may not be the image you want to use for your campaigning immediately because it draws people it doesn't draw you in quickly. It's more of a contemplative image. Whereas if we click out of this one and we go to something that is less busy, 
a little cleaner. So if you go up to the pig sleeping or the pigs in the truck right next to it, either one of those, like um, this is a less busy image and you see what's happening uh, fairly quickly. And actually, can we go to the other one of the resting pigs? Um, yeah, so this image gives uh, you time to pause a little bit. Uh, it gives your eyes uh, and your mind spaces to rest. And uh, it also has the central focus. Like, obviously, it's a crammed, unpleasant situation, but you have the central focus of this pig. And, and that's also a good image for using for campaigns if you need space to, uh, to write something, to add text. And Vic, you have, we have a way of uh, searching for images that are like that, don't we? Do yeah. So we have a. If you can see here, I, I have my mouse on it. It might be a little small, but there's a keyword called copy space, and we use that keyword on visuals where you do have like a fair amount of empty space where you can add text, you can add captions, and that's a way for you to be able to search so that you'll know right away which images you can use for campaign posters or memes on Instagram and Facebook. Um, but while we're here, this actually is a really good example of some of the other information that we include with our visuals. And the team has worked really, really hard. If you look over here on the right, you'll see a description and a headline. So the headline is really talking about that's what's happening in this image. And then the description gives you a little bit more context. So it can talk about what we were shooting, where we were, what happens in these industries. So if you're advocating and you need more information and you wanna have that information that talks about specifically what's happening in, the, happening in this visual, we've provided that for you as well. So you see the year it was shot, who photographed it, where it was photographed, all of that information is there for you, which is, I hope, helpful. Brilliant. Not just helpful, brilliant. <laughs> And an insane amount of work for all of us. <laughs> oh my God, with like, like 14,000 <laughs> visuals. Oh, well, and, and you know, like we, we want to do this right. And we looked at the other big photo agencies and stock sites in the world and how are they doing things? And, you know, we want to be on par. We want to be on the world stage with this really important work. And so uh, largely Vic has, has painstakingly made this a world-class site. I'm super proud. Wow. <laughs> well, Joe, you've spent a lot of time writing these long descriptions, so I, mean, I definitely <laughs> have <the> credit. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next? What about this? This is in here. Is this a good image to use for a campaign? Yeah, I don't think so, unless you want to communicate something very specifically about a zoo or roadside zoos or this kind of captivity. Um, there's eye contact there. There's, you know, it's a decrepit space. It's a lonely space. It's the opposite of anything natural, but is it a good campaign image? I don't think so because the, the animal is just a little too far receded into the background. Um, you know, it could be an image that's used with other images to create kind of a photo essay or, or a montage um, or to show something specific, but not as a leading campaign image for sure. Yeah, it's a little crowded, right? With all the, the bars and everything, maybe hard to see what's happening and it's hard to add text. Yeah. So what are some of the other ones? What about this one? Yes, um, with our investigations, we are always trying to show uh, scope and size, like the magnitude of these industries. So those images are important. And, um, but what we're also trying to do is show the individuals caught in these systems. And so then we could go down to, yes. So who are the individuals? And here is one, you know, one of the billions that we use um, every, every year, every day. And, um, and then we can add, it's like, okay, look at this. It's great to show, like, look at the size, but then look at the individuals. And then you can illuminate more about the individuals. Like, for example, um, she can't walk because they've been genetically bred to grow so quickly. So that's why she's lying down in the dirt. And there's that eye contact as well. And there is that clean space around her that can be used for text if you, if, uh, you need to. There's a question there for you, Vic. 
There's a question for me. Yeah. Oh, so okay. someone is just asking if you built the platform yourself from the ground up or you're customizing an out of the box um, software package. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of both. It's not quite an out of box software package. It is a company that has what's called the digital asset management system, or in short, a dam. And we worked with them to customize this platform specifically for the needs of WAM. So we did do quite a lot of changes to what comes out of the box. Uh, because we had special needs. A lot of, you know, most stock platforms that you go to on the website, it's a very straightforward process and you go in and you buy something and you pay for it and you check out. Wham didn't want to do that. We wanted to make sure that our, our visuals will, were available for free, uh, but we wanted to give people the opportunity to donate if they chose. So we had a lot of work to do in the shopping cart. We had a lot of work to do in terms of how our, how our visuals were displayed, how we could search for things. Uh, one of the things that we did that's that's really cool is I'm just going to go into sanctuaries so we can have some happy things to look at. Yeah. You can see when you when you do a search. So in this case, if I do a search on sanctuaries over here on the left, you've got all these great filters that we added. So this was something that was also really important to us because we want to give you many different ways to search for things to make it as easy as possible. Everyone in this group speaks English, but we have users all around the world and they don't always speak English. So we want to make things really straightforward and simple and give them different tools. And in terms of choosing images, if you have a hard time knowing what's a good visual, what's not as strong, one of the filters we've added is something called staff picks. So staff picks are the visuals that Joe or the team feel are the strongest among the image, uh, among the visuals. So you can see there's 1700 visuals that are ticked as no, but if I click on the staff picks and I do that, I apply that filter, these are gonna be your strongest visuals. So this is already giving you a lead in to what to choose. I love this so much. <laughs> wow, good. but you have to choose your darlings. That must've been hard. <laughs> It's important. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the important things about photography is photo editing. Yeah. And uh, we all need photo editors, but that's that's a whole other AJA function. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and by the way, Victoria, the person who asked about the, the website question said, either way, truly impressive. That's from oh, Charles. Well, thank you. It was, it was a huge group effort. We have an amazing team. We had a really, really good project team with WAM that we all came together. We had weekly meetings. We put a lot of thought into things and we're continuing to evolve. We're continuing to make changes because we're listening to feedback from users. So if you ever have feedback, please forward it our way. Um, we definitely want to make this a tool for you. Amazing. Now, uh, Victoria, can you explain a little bit more about how we credit uh, We Animals Media, what the process of that is? Yeah, so once you've chosen a visual and you've downloaded it, you will also receive a receipt. So you get a copy of a receipt um, and on your receipt, it looks a little bit like this. This is really small, probably. Let me make this a bit bigger. Um, so when you get your in, it's, it's called an invoice, but as you can see, it's $0. So you're not paying for anything. On this receipt, there's a reference. There's a thumbnail to the visual that you downloaded. And right here, it says who to credit. So this is all that you have to do. You just have to copy it from there. But that information is also available on the site in case you lose your receipt or you're not sure. So right down here, it says who the credit is and it'll tell you exactly who to credit. And you know, one of the reasons that we ask you to credit images is because in a lot of cases, the contributors are doing this really difficult work and they're not getting paid. They're doing it at their own expense. They're taking risks. They're going into locations that are really difficult and challenging to photograph in. They're photographing things that are challenging to, to see and to witness and, you know, one of the ways that we can help support them and support their work is to make sure that they do get credit for the work. It helps them build their reputation. It helps them become known in media. And it just, you know, it, it's kind of a fair thing. They're doing all this work. You're getting to use the work for free. So we would just ask that you credit. And I actually have a couple of examples to just show you, uh, you know, ways that people have credited. So this sure. is that visual that Joe, Joe showed us of the pig. This was published by National Geographic. And 
they put their caption on the image and just down below right over here, they added the credit. Animal Justice does a great job crediting our, our visuals. So this is one from Facebook. And right at the bottom, you see where the credit is, Joanne MacArthur, We Animals Media. Same thing on social media and on, and on Instagram and social media, we love it if you also tag us, that's really helpful. So then people know where to come and get more free visuals. I think that's one of the key things as well is that we want people to be able to click into and, and see, oh, like what's We Animals Media? And uh, the more people using our visuals, the better. Yeah, 100%. So let me get back. Too many tabs. So Joe, you created this collection for today, but is it hard to create a collection? Do you use that feature a lot? Why well, no, it isn't, Victoria. <laughs> would I you like to tell segues. us about, about creating a collection? I would love to hear it. This is like <laughs> my favorite tools. Well, I have a lot of favorite tools, but this is a good one. <laughs> So, I mean, the collections is also something that was really important to us because we know that as you're thinking about campaigning, you may want to be able to go in and select some images. You may not want to make a decision right away. You may want to collaborate with someone else. So to create a collection, you can click on the little heart. This is, this is going to show me the collections that I already have. So we've been looking a lot at the AJA Lunch and Learn collection, um, but I also have I'm going to open my collection manager so I see the full collection. I've also created some other collections. So I have, you know, so if I'm going to do a fur protest, there's a lot of fur protests that happen, especially in Montreal. So I've gone and selected some images that I think may be good for that protest and I've added them here. And then I can collaborate with who I'm working on the protest with and they we can talk about what do we like what do we not like we can narrow it down um joe what do you think about these images that i've put up here for hmm. the protest um so first so that it's super super clear so you make the collection and then you just share a link right like there's an option to share this link and you can send it to whoever else yeah so right and here do they, need, do they need to log in and have an account to see it or can they just see it Nope, they can see it. I, I can just click on the, what do we call this? A gear, a gearbox thing? I don't mm -hmm. know what it's called. The little, the little daisy, let's call it a daisy. I can click on that. And right here where it says share, I can decide I wanna share this collection. I can either email it to you directly or I can get a link that I can share via social media or text mm -hmm. message. I can share the link. And once you receive the link, you just have to click on it. You don't have to be logged in or registered and you can see the visuals. Love it. There are a lot of questions coming in that I, I hope we can get to. Should we answer a few of them now? Let's sure. let's let's keep going, and then I'm 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 taking note of the questions, Joe, so we can come back to them. Okay. Right. Um, so once you've created the collections, you can create as many as you want. I have another one called Beautiful Prints, and you know We Animals does print visuals for you. We do fine art printing. If you wanted to support WAM and also have beautiful prints on your wall, that's another way you can do it. Of course, any revenue we get from printing goes back into supporting our work. So I've created this collection of things that might look great on my wall. But let's look Love at. The pig butt. <laughs> Love a cute butt, right? So cute. Um, so let's say we're going to create a new collection, and I want a collection of I don't know what's a suggestion out in the in the chat of a collection that we might want to collect. How about happy happy animal photos? Happy animals. Actually, that's a great idea because we also have something called concepts. So mm -hmm. we have a keyword called happiness, and this is going to hopefully show us visuals of things that evoke a feeling of happiness. I'm going to narrow this down and I'm going to say I just want images so I can do that as well. I can say just show me images or just show me videos or show me both. So these are some happy images. So let's say I, I like this picture here of a rescued chimp. I want to add it to a collection. As I mouse over the heart, if I click on it, it will add it to my default collection, but let's say I wanna create a new collection. So I'm gonna click over here and I'm gonna say, create a new collection and we're gonna call it happy animals. Boom, he's now in happy animals. 
And let's say I want to add another one. I can decide which collection do I want to put this image in. I'm going to put that one in happy animals. I'll put this one in happy animals. Let's put this guy. You look happy. So now, and you can see each time I add it up here on the right, it's going to say it's added successfully to my collection. But the other way I can tell is as I mouse over, you see this one, the heart is grayed out. But as I mouse over here, the heart is yellow. So I know this is added to my collection. Anytime I want to see my collections, I just go back to the heart and it's going to show me all my collections over here on the left. Amazing. Yeah. Now, there are the other ways you can find images. So we've been using search mostly, but if you go over here and you look at the menu, we'll call it the veggie burger menu. And there's a section called galleries. So galleries will bring you to all of our different galleries of images. So these are all of the categories of images and visual and videos that we have on the stock site. And as you can see, as I'm scrolling down, there's actually quite a few. And then some galleries, such as factory farming, maybe if I can zoom, you can see that within this gallery, there's 2,272 visuals in 12 groups. So a group means that there's a subcategory. So if I click into here, now I can see that within factory farming, I have chickens and cows and bulls, dairy cows. So I have all these different subcategories of factory farming, and I can now click into there and look at those visuals. So that's another way to search if you already have an idea of what you're looking for. So you know there's a particular category that, that's of interest to you. I know there's been a lot of talk on AJA, I think it was the action last week, to fill out the survey about the Canadian Dairy Code of Conduct. So if you were advocating for that or wanted to talk to your MP, you could click into the Dairy Cows and Veal Calves collection and you can see all kinds of visuals that you could use there. Absolutely. And then once, of course, once you choose something and you want to download it, it's super easy. All you do, let's find something. Let's, let's take Ron. So it is a shopping cart, which may be a little bit counterintuitive because the images are free. So you might wonder, why do I have to add it to a shopping cart? That's just the way the system works, guys. <laughs> I don't have a good answer. Um, that's how it's got to work. So you would add Ron to your shopping cart and you can see up here, he's been added to your cart. And then you can click on the shopping cart icon. It's going to bring you into the cart. I've created my test account. So that's, I'm going to confirm that that's the address. Now I'm going to select what kind of license I want. So we talked about, you know, using the visuals for free if you're helping animals, if it's a non-commercial use. So the difference for us is that a commercial use is if you're going to take this image and put it on the cover of a book and sell the book and make millions of dollars, that would be a commercial use. So we would ask you to you know, pay for that image in that case because you are gonna be using it to generate revenue. Most of you I'm guessing are going to be using these for advocacy. That's all non-commercial, so you're going to select the non-commercial use license. You also have the option of what size to download. I, um, my suggestion is that you really choose the smallest size that you need, and that's because on average, people tend to download you know, between 15 and 20 visuals at a time. So if you're choosing the largest size and you're downloading 15 or 20 visuals, that could take a while to download. So if you really only are gonna share this on Instagram, choose the Instagram side, it'll be much faster. And then we just wanna know a little bit of information about what you're doing with this visual. And this is for our purposes so that we know how the visuals are being used and we can provide better visuals going forward because we know what you're looking for. So in this case, let's say it's policy change. And then if you wanna give us a little bit more information, you can just say, you know, it's for an Instagram post. And then you're just going to scroll down here and you're going to say, I'm going to use it on social media. And then you can see that it's already $0. I'm going to apply it to my image. I'm going to agree to the licensing terms. And I'm going to check out. Oh, I didn't add a billing contact. That's this one.
Ta-da! Please add a licensee. No. <laughs> <laughs> this always happens to me. <laughs> That's okay. We get the gist of it. <laughs> so general, it's because I just created this account this morning, mm -hmm. so I don't have any of this, but that's what you would have to do. You'd have to just enter your information and then it gives you the option if you want to proceed without a donation. If you'd like to donate, we always appreciate that. Even if you nice. donate a dollar, it goes to help pay for the platform for one, because it, we do have to pay to, to have this hosted every month. And then you can just go ahead and proceed. And you're gonna see these lovely little flying circles. Your image will be available and to download and that's it, you're done. Amazing, thank you, Victoria. Okay, we have lots of questions. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, Okay. do you want to keep the screen, should we keep the copy, um, sorry, the sh uh, screen share on or do you wanna, um, maybe we should in case it's a yeah, question. Sure. Related. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. We um, could go okay. back to the, the collection we made for the day in case we want to reference any. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, okay, so first of all, I'm going to ask, because this is something probably a lot of, of the aspiring photographers or already photographers in the in the crew are asking. And Linda's Linda Camp asks, can we submit photos um, to be added to the site or do you suggest another pro animal advocacy site? So how does it go if people want to contribute to We Animals? Go ahead, Vic. So yes, we would love for you to contribute to We Animals. We have a link on our website, which I will share after because I may not be able to find it super, super mm -hmm. fast. But if you go to the main We Animals website page and there's a section called work with us, and you can that's it's actually and join the team. <laughs> oh, there we go. So right here you can there's a section called become a We Animals Media contributor. You can just fill out a form, send us a link to your portfolio or where you have your your visuals stored and we have a whole process to be able to look at your visuals and get you added onto the stock site. We're, we're working really hard to make sure we have a very comprehensive collection. So if you've got stuff to share, please let us know. Hey, we do vet for, for quality as well. Um, yeah. Only the quality of the image, but the, um, the resolution, like if it's shot on a phone and low res and stuff, we're not gonna be able to use it. Yeah. Anything else that folks that are contributing should know? Anything in particular you're looking out for or you'd like more of? We have that listed there on the site. Okay, too. perfect. So we're looking specifically at uh, industrial farming, fish and sea life, environment and climate change, and the future of food. Um, less so sanctuary images, um, which we have a lot of. But, you know, if it works really, really good, we might make an exception. Um, Polly M is asking, and I think somebody, oh yes, and Naomi, they were both sort of asking something similar. Um, what if you were, they were to use the images, for example, on a t-shirt or a sticker as a fundraiser, um, would that require a paid license? Yeah, in that case, if you're, if you're selling the t-shirts to raise funds, then that would be a commercial license. But what you'll see is that even when you're licensing the visuals commercially through our site, the, the fees are very small. We're probably significantly lower than what you would pay on a typical stock site. And again, the reason that we do this is because we want to be able to share some revenue with our contributors. And one of the ways that we can do that is through licensing fees. So when you commercially license visuals from the site, we do pay royalties to our contributors and they definitely appreciate that. And it helps them continue to do their work in the field. Wonderful. And, uh, and Naomi's um, question is, is, is a little different. Um, she's saying, uh, we're, for example, we're building a brand. She wants to more, know more about licensing. We're building a brand that is all about advocating for animals, but we sell apparel. We wouldn't want to use images uh, on any products that we sell, but we would like to use on the website or social for telling stories behind the products and the organizations we give a percentage of sales to. So what would be the licensing with that? that? Would it be different than what you just described? Yeah, I think if you're telling a story on your website and you're using some of our visuals to tell that story, that's that's more of a, a non-commercial use. Whereas if you're using visuals on a page that, you know, has, let's say there's three or four images across the top, and then there's a big, a big thing that says, please donate to us and give us money to support our apparel 
company, that would be more commercial. Do you see the distinction between the two? You can always just write to us and ask if you're unsure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Wonderful. Um, okay, let me go on to a couple of the other questions here. Um, so um, Jade asked, um, oh no, uh, let's go to Lindsay first. She asked, can a painter use WAM images as references for their work? What are the guidelines around that? Yeah, they, they do that often. We love seeing our work translated into other forms of artwork. I think that's the short answer, right, Vic? Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, Jade is asking, Joanne, have you worked in Southeast Asia and documented the plight of dogs and cats in the meat trade, an issue um, that is still largely ignored here in the East? In the West. Thank you. Oh, in yeah. the West, sorry. <laughs> in the West. <laughs> uh, yes, I have done so, and some ha uh, so have our contributors. Vic, you're fast. I am fast. I got those search words down, baby. <laughs> So we have, and yet I, I will say that because there are already um, a lot of visuals on, on that and a lot of people working on it, a lot of NGOs working on it with, with decent videos, we haven't made it a priority. Uh, it's not, that story is not quite as underserved as other um, industrial farming stories. Um, I think we can take off the screen share because these are a little bit more general questions now. Perfect. Thank you, Vic, for being the oh, fastest say? gun in the West here with these, uh, these images. Amazing. So um, one of the things that um, folks, uh, a couple of people have asked, Joe, is, um, you know, and, and this is a question that I'm always curious about too, but um, you you are one of the happiest people I know, <laughs> yet you have not these pictures that images and video that most of us can't like most of the population can't even look at. You're going right into those situations and you have for years. And so what are you doing? How, how, how do you, uh, you know, avoid it gutting you or felling you? Um, for those uh, out there that are, are wanting to work more with these images or even do the photography themselves. Yeah, I did see that question come in and someone asked if I had PTSD or if our contributors have PS PTSD. It's undoubtedly extremely painful work. We do it because we're compassionate, because we care so much. That's why we go to such insane degrees, you know, sneaking into farms and uh, trespassing if we have to, uh, putting ourselves in danger over and over in order to do this work, but it must be done. Uh, I really like people, um, but uh, my loyalty is to the animal stories, and so I continue to do it, and I know that's how a lot of us contributors feel. There are so few of us doing this work that I think we also feel so compelled to continue to do it and do it well sometimes at our uh, psychological detriment. So over time, I've learned to employ all the tools that I could possibly need to stay happy. Like I have this one life to live and, and I want to live it happily. And so I have to live alongside of the suffering, not totally entwined with it every day. And so I'm not entwined with it every day. I am aware that intense suffering is happening, happening for billions at every moment. But um, I think often us activists feel like we have to be feeling it along with them out of solidarity and empathy and to motivate us to continue doing the work, but that's exhausting. And, um, and so I live alongside the suffering. I enter into the suffering and then I exit it and nurture myself and you know focus on the things that make me happy um, because I deserve to be happy. <laughs> Uh, and we all deserve to be happy. Like we're fighting for the happiness of others. So let's, you know, let's nurture our own happiness as well. Mm -hmm. Just That's the short answer. There are no, yes. And uh, I'd like to recommend a book by Patrice Jones called Aftershock. And it's written specifically for animal advocates who are dealing with the trauma of this world. Highly recommend that one. 
Absolutely. And just from a practical point of view, um, if we are constantly living and suffering, um, that's what we're cultivating. You know, that's if we are eat, you know, sleep, breathing, suffering, we are just, we're cultivating the energy of suffering. And, and it's up to us to be cultivating an energy of expansion, of compassion. Um, and so we also need to be concentrating on cultivating that alongside the um, exposing and, and, and everything we need to do for the animals. So Joe, um, it just, if you got a couple of little, we're, we're almost at time, but just um, if I can ask you uh, one more question, because this is, came up a bit in the chat. Um, how do you get permission to take photos of animals or people, especially in a disturbing scene? Um, do you usually cover your identity or tell them the work you're doing? So how do, how do you get these into these places? I get in in every which way that I possibly can. Uh, sometimes that's buying a ticket to an entertainment industry. Uh, initially, I was trying to sneak into those as well because I didn't want to give them a single dime. But as my boss at Zoo Check told me over a decade ago, he said, Joe, spend that 20 bucks, bucks to get into a zoo. It's an incredible investment in animal advocacy. And it's true. Those images that I shot 15 years ago are still being used today. 20 bucks, 50 bucks is not going to make or break some of these industries. So I spend the money when I can to go in a, into a place of entertainment. And um, unfortunately, a lot of these industries are completely closed to people like me. And I know you guys talk a lot about AGAG at Animal Justice. And, um, and uh, you know, because they don't want us there with cameras. And so unfortunately, I do have to trespass. I work in very, with very secure teams. I go in at night or, you know, under false pretenses to, to document. I don't like doing it, but it's unfortunately for now part of my job. I'm also not recommending that people do that. Um, if you're going to do it, you should do it with a lot of consideration, uh, you know, legal advice, a, a secure team. There are a lot of things to consider. Your health is, your mental health and your physical health is on the line because you could get caught, you could get beaten up, you could be put in jail, you could get bankrupt from being in in the court system and all this. So it's not something to, to do lightly, it's something to do with a lot of knowledge and support. Um, some of the questions that are coming in uh, about coping and about how we do these things, we address in the masterclass. Um, yeah, let's talk about the masterclass. So yeah, yeah. we've got a link for it. And, and so anybody that has just really kind of gotten excited by this stuff, um, there is a masterclass you can also um, register and it's, I think, a small fee to do it. So Joe, what, tell us what's in the masterclass. We created the masterclass because we get the same questions all the time, like how the how to's, uh, the technical aspects, the coping and uh, if I was just answering those things over and over, I'd be on email all day doing that. And um, so what we built was a really beautiful two and a half hour self-guided eight episodes masterclass. It has uh, programming as well. It has assignments. Uh, it has uh, uh, references and suggestions. And it's $45. Um, and I think it's been downloaded like or bought like some 500 times, which is just makes me so happy because it shows what an incredible interest there is in animal photojournalism and investigative work and, and being a um, strategic and positive activist in the world. So that's the masterclass. Uh, Vic, what did I miss about the masterclass, if anything? I think that's it. I mean, uh, Kirsten has shared the link in the chat for anybody who's interested in the link. Uh, and I, it's really a good resource. I know there's a lot of people who want to learn how to do this work. And I think it's, you know, you, you definitely should check it out. It's one of the first things I checked out um, before I even joined the WAM team. So um, wow. I highly recommend it. Amazing. And um, yeah, and, uh, you know, a lot of animal advocates are used to getting stuff like Animal Justice Academy and We Animal Stock <laughs> site for free. And so, you know, the, knowing that this is also going back into the We Animals um, coffers and doing amazing things, there should be no, not even a blink at, at a mere $45, folks. So, so download it, get it, get it, you know, in your brain, because um, we need more people capturing those images. I um, tried to make it free, but the team wouldn't let me. Uh, I know. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, and if, and if the team was letting me make everything free all the time, we'd be totally broke. Like we totally been already. So no, we need to charge for some things. We put like hundreds of hours into making that. So yeah, totally. Good job, team. Keep her, keep her from destroying herself. <laughs> 
Um, okay, so before you go, um, I just want to remind um, our AJAers of our um, action of the week because it has to do intrinsically with this. Um, jo has given us her invaluable guidance today, and we want to repay the favor. Um, jo is up for the Natural History Museum's Wildlife Photographer of the Year Award. Um, this is a really prestigious honor that would expose her work um, of bringing visibility to hidden animals everywhere to a whole new audience, folks. So um, if we can help her make this happen, that would be amazing. It takes less than a minute to vote for Joe's photo. Um, Kirsten, you want to uh, share your screen and just show this uh, unbelievable photo that is up. There we go. So this beautiful photo, Hope in a Burned Plantation, um, just heartbreaking and breathtaking all at the same time. And it just takes a moment to vote. You can only vote once, um, but um, we put it out to uh, the entire AJA list this morning. Um, so hopefully our 6,000 strong uh, you know, crew will, will all uh, put a vote in and, and let's get you as Wildlife uh, Photographer of the Year, Joe. Thanks so much, Kimberly. Yay. Um, um, Victoria, oh, you can unspotlight us, Kirsten, because you need to see your adoring, your adoring um, community here. Um, if you go back on gallery view, um, uh, Vic and Joe, um, ladies and gentlemen here, can we please give Joe and Vic a beautiful thank you, AJA style. Woohoo! <laughs> thank you for being here. Oh, you're what beautiful, an honor and pleasure. you too. Thank you hey, so I, much I for the I also want to shout out one of our um, our contributors, Nikki Richer is here. Oh, where's Nikki? Oh, Wave, Nikki. Yay, Nikki. So Nikki is an incredible shooter who was at the fires, floods and fires, send her into the throw, she will go. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, we love you, Nikki. <laughs> and um, and we've got uh, one of our AJ um, filmmakers here too, um, Holly. Holly Johnson is here. You want to wave, Holly? There we go. Holly's doing some really beautiful work uh, video wise. So maybe she's going to have some stuff to throw your way one of these days. Mm. Uh, um, so I just, before you go, folks, um, the next Lunchtime Live is in two weeks, uh, Thursday, February 10th. And it's Susan Hargraves who runs the Be an Animal Hero organization for kids wanting to do animal advocacy. And we're going to talk to her about the ins and outs of involving kids in animal advocacy. So for those of you that have kids in your life, whether you have actual children or a niece and nephew, a family friend, or you just like to be more well-versed in helping this next generation to become a more compassionate one to animals, please join us at noon on February 10th. Okay, Joe, Vic, AJ Ayers, thank you for coming out today. Mwah. Love you all for all your dedication. And we will talk to you soon. Have a great rest of your week. Thanks. Bye. Bye.